How to make a Stuart triple expansion engine run. This one is part 11. It is very important that parts do not work loose and drop off the engine when it is running. For this reason I am fitting lock nuts to the bolts that hold the big end brasses in place. I complete the assembly by refitting the long exhaust inlet pipe from the intermediate to the low pressure cylinder, followed by an extended running in period. This part is very important indeed. Each of the big end brasses, which by the way are not made from brass, they're made from gun metal, are held together by two bolts and a steel plate. Fitting lock nuts here is a bit of a belt and braces approach, but it's far better than the bolts working loose, or even worse, one of the big ends parting company with the connecting rod. I fitted the lock nuts and tightened them up, so I don't think these are going anywhere. Once again, a bit of a caution about tightening small nuts and bolts, because if you over tighten them, they usually shear off, and on this engine, there are one or two stripped bolts and studs. Nothing serious, I actually bought some 7BA studding to make some new, slightly longer studs. The main purpose of this video is to show the running in or breaking in process. First of all though, a quick check, are all the parts in place? And the answer to that, with the exception of the cladding, is yes. All the piping is connected up and the engine is ready to go. I mentioned in the previous video that the owner of the engine is not bothered if it doesn't run in reverse, which saves me a lot of work. I was going to have to make a complete new set of eccentrics, individually adjustable, but now I don't have to do that. I pumped some oil into the high pressure steam chest and lubricated all the moving parts of the engine and now it's time to connect the compressed air and open the tap. The engine is running very well indeed. I have done a bit of tweaking of the timing, and although the previous clip you've seen was a very short clip, I did run it for quite a while. Here's another run, initially using a higher air pressure. I put my hand on top of the engine just to stop it moving about. It's going quite fast at the moment. I ran it like this for quite a while until the compressor got a bit too hot, then I let it cool. From my experience, these triple expansion engines are far from silent, but it runs very well. And considering that the high pressure cylinder is only three quarters of an inch in diameter, and they are very powerful for their size. All I can really do in this video is run the engine until it smooths out a bit further. It's given my compressor a bit of a hammering. In this clip, you're listening to the sound of the compressor pumping back up to pressure. The more I run this engine, the smoother it gets. Here's a bit of slow motion. It's a triple expansion engine, so it uses the air three times, but it's not as good as using steam three times, because the air doesn't expand in each cylinder. Towards the end of this series, once I've made the condenser, I will give it a steam test, and you should hear and see the difference. They are quite difficult to start. You rotate the flywheel, and then suddenly off it goes when you don't expect it to. The best thing to do is find the position of the engine where it becomes self-starting with the flywheel in a certain position. Try it a few times until you find out for definite that you've got it right. Then slacken the grub screw, we're using an Allen key because I changed the original slotted screw for an Allen type, and make it so that the hole in the flywheel is at the top in the correct position for the engine to start. 
Why are these engines so tight? Well, it's the piston rings, really. There are three piston rings in the high-pressure cylinder, three piston rings in the intermediate cylinder, and one very large piston ring in the low-pressure cylinder. By running in or breaking in the engine, the piston rings and the cylinders become a much better fit with each other. Each successive run is an improvement on the previous one. Another couple of hours running the engine flooded with oil should make a big difference. As you can see, it's running quite slowly now on not a lot of pressure. And in theory, after a while, it should get even better than this. That's it for the narration. I'm going to leave the engine running until the end of the video. These things really are poetry in motion. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.